This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Welcome to the lecture on property income and investments for individuals. Income from property consists of two different areas. Firstly, we're going to look at rental income. So that's under a lease or a tenancy agreement and how that works, what is income and when is it received, um, what expenses you can claim and how that um, profit when you finished then transfers into the income tax computation. Then we will spend some time looking at premiums received on the grant of a short lease. Now prior to 2019-2020 uh, it was always done on what's known as an accrual basis. How do we work out the income and expenditure on an accrual basis? And that is a term you will have come across in your other modules for ACCA. It's an accounting term. And basically it's the rental income accrued less any allowable expenses incurred. However, since 2019-20, and this is applicable to you, we're now on what's known as a simple cash basis. And it tells you there that the exam question will assume this applies unless it specifically says so. So again, read the question carefully. It will no, Normally, it will be on a cash basis, but if it isn't, and it's on a accruals basis, then you will be told specifically that that is the case. Now, this example that I have here that I want to show you, um, we're going to do... Um, a cash basis in two situations. So Jim bought a property, rented it out for the first time on the 1st of July 2022. Rent was 6,000 a year per annum means per year. Per year. Alternatively, it was either paid in advance or paid in arrears. So a cash basis where money comes in first or it comes in later. So we'll do those two examples so that if in an exam question it tells you it's quarterly in advance or it tells you it's quarterly in arrears, you'll have an example here that will help you to understand both. Alternatively, it says here at the bottom an accruals basis. So you've got three different ways. This example covers all the three different ways. Now the expenses, there was £300 in November 22 for redecoration, which is an allowable expense. Then £500 in May 23. Okay, read every question when you do these things carefully. Because May 23 is in next year, not this year. Okay, so that will have an impact uh, for repairs that were completed in March 2023. So, I'm going to show you how this works. Firstly, we are going to do in advance. from the question. So it was received 1st of July, October, January and April. So those were the months that it will have been received. So the money in or the income would have been £6,000 because that's what he actually received. Now because it's a cash basis you can only claim expenses that have actually been paid. And in 22-23, there was only that one expense. Be careful of the dates. So the income would have been 5,700. Okay, that's in advance. In arrears. Okay, that was in advance. This is in arrears. So that would have been received the 30th of September, 31st of December, and the 31st of March. So actually, in that situation, that's only the amount that was received in this tax year, 22-23. Four and a half thousand. And again, you can only have the expenses that were paid. 
So the figure of 4,200 in that case would be the figure that you would then transfer to the income tax computation that is covered in chapter two. And that would be your income, uh, your non-savings income. Okay, so the third type of um, situation that you might come across is on an accrual basis. Okay, and remember, this is only if the question specifically says so. Okay, only if the question specifically says so. So in this situation, we've got, we're looking at between the 1st of July 22 and the 5th of April 23 only okay now it doesn't matter whether or not it's paid in advance or paid in arrears or even what you've received okay the annual payment is six thousand pounds and that period of time is only nine months. Therefore, the income on an accruals basis is four and a half thousand. Totally different. It's not what you've received, whether in advance or in arrears, it's what's accrued. Okay, so it's a nine month period. Now, all the expenses can be claimed. So that's the 300 and the 500. So 3,700 is the figure that needs to go onto the income tax computation. All three situations you have there. Okay, all three situations. So moving on, what can we have as a deduction? Now there is a list here. We will deal with this terminology wholly and exclusively later on in the lecture system that we've got coming up. Um, because I hope you're watching these in order. Um, <clears throat> wholly and exclusively mean that, and, and you notice the way that wholly spent, spelt with a fwe. Um, it must be just for the business only, exclusively for the business. So you've got things here, agents, fees, insurances, management expenses, repairs. Um, motor expenses, slightly different. Uh, we're using the revenues approved mileage scheme, 45p a mile. Now that should be in the tax rates in your exam. You don't have to remember the 45p. Um, finances are not on allowable expenses. We'll deal with that in a minute. Um, the, the, the rules on those have changed slightly. Um, capital expenses are not allowable. So you can have repairs. Yep. But capital you can't. Now, there is a fine line between what is a repair and what is capital. Sometimes it's obvious from the from the question, decoration. It will say with the word repair. Um, if in doubt, and you're not sure whether something is or isn't a repair, or is or isn't capital, make your decision and write a note or type a note onto the exam answer to say, I have assumed this is a repair and included it. Don't ignore it, okay. Tell the examiner your thought process regarding it. Because there can come situations where the wording might be a little bit confusing and you're not quite sure whether or not it's a repair or capital. If in doubt, decide and then explain what you've decided. So you've told the examiner, I know what the rules are, but I'm not sure which one this falls into. So I've told you what I think it is and explained the rule. That's the best way to go. Capital allowances, that's rare. Uh, now, this is a, um, a new one. 
this is a new one. It's called Replacement Furniture Relief. I'm going to read this because it's, it just makes uh, and explain it as I go along. So, residential lettings, partly or fully furnished. Okay. You get relief for buying furniture to put into there under the Replacement Furniture Relief Scheme. So, no relief for the initial cost when you first put it in. You only get it when the asset is replaced okay so not when you first do it but if something needs replacing then you can make a claim for that as an expense under the replacement furniture relief and it, it tells you what it is replacement furniture not initial furniture or furniture but replacement furniture kind of tells you what it is now the amount that you can claim Let me give you an example. It's easier to give you an example. So I sold a um, a washing machine. For 50 pounds. And I bought a washing machine. For 200 pounds. Therefore I can have relief. Of 150 under that scheme now example it tells you here um, the amount of relief is reduced by any proceeds from selling the old asset which have been replaced which is what we've done here however <clears throat> relief is not given for any cost which represents an improvement so different example we sold the washer for 50 pounds and we bought a washer dryer that's an improvement that cost us 450 pounds you can't have the extra 250 pounds relief you can't have 400 pounds as an expense you can't have it you can only have the 150 you could only have the 150 as though you'd bought a replacement washing machine. That's how it works. Um, it doesn't apply this rule. And these are rules after all. So that's the rules. Rules. Tax is full of rules. Doesn't apply to furnished holiday lettings. Um, because they can get capital allowances on it. Okay. Those are the main uh, points that we need to bring out from from there. So let's have a look at an example so that we can see what we have here. We're going to work out the property income assessment for 2022-23 for the tax year. Sid owns a furnished property that is let out for an annual rent of £9,600 payable monthly in advance. Okay, so that brings in the first rule that we looked at. And we've got the following expenses. May 22, construction of a garage, replacing the carport. Insurance for the year, from the 1st of July 22. Insurance for the previous year to the 30th of June 22 was 420. This year, he's paid 480. Drain clearance, he paid 380 for that in November. January bought a new cooker with an integrated microwave oven replacing a cooker which he'd sold for £50. A replacement cooker would have cost him £300. That's what we've just been discussing, replacement furniture and what you can and can't have. And in May 23, some redecoration which was completed in March. The tenant vacated the property during June 22 without having paid the rent due for June. Sid was unable to trace the defaulting tenant, but managed to let the property to new tenants on the 1st of July. This is a typical um, exam style question. So we're going to look at all that information and see what it looks like if we do a rental um, income from property um, assessment. OK, let's have a look. So we have rental income.
£9,600, but only for 11 months because of that month where there was no tenant. Now, what expenses can we have? And again, make sure your pro forma looks nice and neat and well presented. We can have the replacement furniture. We've just been discussing that. 300 minus 50. We can have the insurance. And because this is a cash basis, it's what he paid. It was an accruals basis, it would be a different answer. Drain clearance. Three hundred and eighty, which gives us a property income, which would go into our income tax computation of seven thousand six hundred and ninety. Now you'll notice there's one missing there, the garage capital expense. Okay, capital expense um, not allowed. So that's how you would deal with and again if you the idea with these when you've got a question like that you can work out you bring the rules back to your mind you can work out what that is bearing in mind there was a whole month missing write these down if if you're unsure write the pro forma out rental income then put each one of these in garage insurance drain clearance cooker redecoration set the pro forma out but don't put any numbers in and then decide which one you can do i can do that one yeah that's drain clearance definitely goes in um insurance cash basis must be paid that goes in cooker mm, that's the rule that jill explained it's this and this and this do a little working put the figure in now, if you're not sure about the redecoration or you're not sure about the construction garage, think about it. Do the easy bits first and then the more complicated bits afterwards. Okay. You can do this. I have faith in you. You can do this. All right. Now, what happens if when you have done um, a, a set of accounts or a little bit of a, um, a, a, an assessment here and it makes a loss? Okay. So your income is less than your expenses so if the total ink expenses exceeds the rental income you would put nil in your income tax in the income tax computation you would put nil any excess loss so say for example the income was four thousand and the expenses were six thousand just as an example, you've made a loss of two. That is carried forward and offset against future property income profits only. You can't use it anywhere else. Okay, so next year, when you do your income and expenditure, you would then deduct the loss from that and the balancing figure would then go into your income tax computation. Now, we talked earlier about the fact that finance expenses, mortgages, loans, to buy property is no longer allowed as an income and expenditure. So in that computation that we did in example number two, you couldn't put um, mortgage interest. You couldn't put it in here. Okay. Now, it is a legitimate expense. So the rules have changed. Instead, relief is given as a basic rate tax deduction from the individual's income tax liability. It doesn't appear in the income tax computation. It doesn't appear in the property income statement. It appears as a tax deduction. Okay. So basic rate reduction applies to 100% of the finance cost. You can have the whole lot. You can have all of it. Um, it applies to the incident interest and associated incidental costs, which you might get. Uh, 
you can't have it it does not apply to companies you can't have it all furnished holiday lettings and there's an example here so in 22-23 the taxpayer incurs mortgage interest expense of £5,000 on a residential property none of it is shown as an allowable expense but it will achieve tax relief as a tax deduction at 20% which is the basic rate reducing the tax liability that's where it goes by a thousand pounds